it's my turn again to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Kelvin Chen. He has actually a number of honors degrees. So DSC, PhD, FCP, FSB, FRPS, FRSM, and I let him translate these to you, but really very impressive. And he is the joint chair of traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, at the University of Sydney, as mentioned, and University of Western Sydney. And he is appointed, was appointed to establish strategic research and development of the TCM in the New South Wales district, and to understand the cultural role uh, of the discipline in community health care. Trained in industrial pharmacy, then specialized in clinical pharmacology, clinical pharmacology in the UK. He has taught pharmacology in orthodox medicine, pharmacy, and biomedical science in traditional Chinese medicine at universities in Hong Kong, the UK, and the United Arab Emirates. Research interests working closely with counterparts in key labs in Hong Kong, Heilongjiang, Heilongjiang, okay, <laughs> and Macau. I'm still learning. And Macau, thank you. Uh, and Macau in China, and with colleagues in the European Union and the UK. Uh, he's also, he include, his research includes R&D of Chinese medicines, methodology on quality control of Chinese Materia Medica, omics approaches in bioactivity screening, interactive research in TCM with biomedical medicine applying patients, reported outcomes and quali quality of life measure in clinical studies, promoting education and training curriculum towards integrative medicine. That's, of course, uh, a lot. And uh, I will have to stop here. And I introduce Dr. Shen. Well, I think we have very short time. As you know that I'm not really a TCM practitioner. And my actually background, as you've shown, so, in other words, I'm a jack of all trades and nothing special, like Professor Asawaki or Zhong Zheng. But what I want to give you the message is, and how to make good use of traditional medicine and try to find out evidence base, and then hopefully we link all the scientists together to get it uh, sort of uh, right. Okay. So, very, very quickly, within the next 25 minutes, I focus on what really, how to translate the research depth that we have in TCM at the moment into clinical use. Right. Oh, very briefly, I actually came from two universities, as I said. This is a new one, Western Univers uh, Sydney University. This is a mimicking Oxford. It's mm -hmm. the first university in um, Sydney. Right, you're all familiar with this. Look at this one. It takes many, many years, screen many, many compounds, spend nearly 600 million pounds now, up to now, and you get one compound, and cost you a lot of money, but you have the, uh, what do you call it, IP for 25 years, as patent. And can we do this uh, using herbal medicine? My answer right in mid is waste of time. Why? Because Professor Iqbal Chowdhury, I met him in 1996, and he wrote a review report to WHO. He said, there's a very famous uh, pharmaceutical company called Glaxo. That Glaxo now is GFK, right? they make link together. And they spent 15 years in Singapore screening all the Southeast Asia medicine. And they have closed shop, no success. What is the answer? Why we spend so much time and cannot get anything right? This is our theme today how to alter the paradigm of using medicinal plant to other development and how we can do it. So I have very sort of a briefly go through these five main topics. Um, I have about 40 odd slides, not as many as the Professor Asawaki, 80. But anyway, I try to my best to do it. Okay. When I selected this title, I want to understand what translation really mean, right? And there are different wording. And when I came out 1996 uh, literature, and it showed me that different people have different 
such of an idea. Summarize. If you are based on the industrial sector, you like to get a new compound, new drug, or new diagnostic technique by using basic science and do it. But if you are healthcare sector, you try to make use of this information for the treatment of a disease, right? And then if you look at uh, other paradigm, how they do it for clinical study, you try to convince the nursing staff, the doctors, how to use the latest technology. Now we call it e-health, okay? But back to basic. And if you look at WHO report, this is outdated now, but still makes sense. And look at all the traditional medicine. Most of them actually use herb, right? And even in the debatable homeopathy, they use poisonous herb to cure people, but very, very dilute. But at the moment, nobody understands how it works, okay? So, and that will give you some idea of why the Western me medical doctors are so suspicious about what we are doing, right? Whatever it is, Zhong Zhen already covered a lot of this, and I just quickly go through it. The key thing is quality, safety, and efficacy. And it's easier now that we have the technology, safety. If you use traditional experience, you may not go too much wrong. But if you have a new stuff extracted and very toxic, then Professor Asavaki told you the compound there is toxic, you can't eat it. So what we are trying to do is, this is the, uh, in Europe, we have a project starting in 2009, 2012, the under funding by the uh, FP7. And in fact, Professor Gordon is actually representing from China to join us on that when I was in UK. And in fact, this is a free publication. It tells you vividly, all the scientists all over the world, 105 of them, go into the literature and search what has been done for TCM, and that is free edition. You can go and get it uh, from journal, from uh, all. They cover most of this, but not all, okay? So what is this particular one? Okay, you look at Chinese medicine. They use a lot since 1990, 1911, right? And, but after 1911, it's closed shop because we changed to Western medicine paradigm. TCM seems to be dying off. But when Mao started uh, in 1950, and we encouraged the Western medical doctor to relearn Chinese medicine, and that's why in China you have paradigm both in parallel and also in separate, right? Three of stream are doing at the moment. But how, look at the research, not many. And then this is the particular one we found out that Cochrane, you know, is gold standard. You follow them, and then your systematic review, you follow them. But the answer is, no. It seems to me that after review, there's something working, but it doesn't follow the gold standard. They do not recognize that it's working. And this is why the problem we are facing at the moment, we means not just TCM, it's herbal medicine in such, uh, really, uh, quite a difficult one. But if you look at Chinese medicine, it's actually individualized treatment. But if you do a clinical trial, randomized, double-blind study, you never get the same answer. And that's why they say it's not working. Okay, bear that in mind. So, in other words, my idea of actually development in the future is you can have product orientated or individual care orientated in, this, in such a sense that you focus on the delivering results and get evidence base behind it. And at the moment, Western medicine are facing very difficult situation. They cannot control this and they cannot control cancer, they cannot neurological disorder. Right. Any answer? New drug? No new drug coming in, very, not a lot. If it comes in, very expensive. So how can then we can translate whatever the experience, all the traditional medicine and like Ayurvedic, Urani and all that, can also using similar method, as I uh, can explain. Okay, so this one I already uh, mentioned something about the future RCT, 
randomized clinical trial should actually link with TCM practitioner to find out how they classify the patients into different groups. Then you do your randomized double-blind clinical trial. For instance, rheumatoid arthritis, people already can link with the Chinese medicine differentiation with system biology approach or sing, single out which particular biomarker they can monitor. And that way, you may get a better answer. Okay, so, but it's still theory yet. But I, I actually went to a lecture to meet this guy. Um, uh, he's the father of systems biology. When people ask him, uh, what is system biology? Why people studying TCM try to link together? They said there is a possibility, but it takes a long time to prove. And even Western medicine may not even get answer through system biology. But that is the way that we are doing now. But the tools is already there, we can use. And you know, this is the feasible approach now. What I'm trying to do is uh, going through some of the quality uh, paradigm first, before then we can focus on some of these. I'll give you some case study on it. Functional measure. Every one of us in here can relay certain activity to some pathological report. We call it biomedical parameters or the fancy word biomarkers. In each of the system, you can do it, okay? And then if you can monitor before when you are healthy and after you feel sick. And the way actually is doing it is not uh, difficult. Nowadays we have the tools because the human genome since the uh, early day 1993, all the way down now, almost most of the genomic characteristic has been worked out. And the technology allow us to do it. And one of the things that I have been working when I was in Hong Kong is we have a, a pharma, herbal pharmaceutical industry approach us to do a clinical study on dementia. Right. And then we're trying to link on what we can measure in dementia. Actually, uh, homocysteine is one of the endogenous excess product after your glutathione circle. Okay. I have no time to, to, to develop uh, the, the, the basic on it, but just take it, these are the indexes people are doing. At the moment, you can link with high level of homocysteine, can link with atherosclerosis. And of course, there are different other people rejected the idea, but if you measure it, you can find it out from the pathological uh, data. And we did some uh, study on aging pa patient up to 70 years old compared with the young one. But the next one they want us to try is to look at their uh, product, see whether they can help chronic liver disease. And in Hong Kong, we do have a lot of happy uh, patients, uh, such as uh, waiting to flare up to get uh, cancer. But if you can uh, help them, whatever way we can do it. <coughs> so, the homocysteine sort of uh, metabolism in their patient is impaired, and then, of course, they have a higher level than uh, normal people. And also, as a sidetrack, we managed to uh, measure the insulin growth factor as well, number one, which is a precursor to produce growth hormone in your body. And some of the literature we, we look at, you can have a reverse sort of a chorus, uh, correlation between growth hormone and IGF-1. Okay. And we try to see whether uh, we can use herbal medicine to look at it. Very quickly, the patient treatment on this, uh, because it's expensive to do clinical trial, so we only just do a panel study. Okay, male and female. And then we take one nightly suppository. Now, interestingly, the herbal formula that they gave us is like this. Most herbal firms, they keep secret, not as open as, because they said you may pinch the idea. And this is the trouble now. But we insist that if we do not have a fingerprint of your product, we're not going to do anything. So we do fingerprint, and we ask them for what sort of uh, 
material it is. And they, <coughs> long behold, they have uh, Dunstan and Sanchi silver neutralizer. I think Professor Guo will tell you more about Dunstan. He's the king of Dunstan. In the, in, but anyway, he can rectify whatever I did is wrong now. Dunstan and Sanchi, right? And we can actually monitor those. And afterwards, I mean, you look at the levels again, homocysteine and IGF-1, you can see that the after treatment, three months, there is a significant reduction, yeah, even though the number is not a lot, and the IGF-1 gradually growing up. But some people mention IGF-1 can be related to cancer, but which type of cancer, we don't know. So, and, and this is, an interesting find out, but this is a panel study, and we find out, okay, it may work. So what we can do now is, we we have this publication, and that actually, uh, Dr. Choi is is a, is a PhD. He got a double PhD. He is a pathological PhD, a disease PhD, and also TCM practitioner now, doing quite well in Hong Kong. So this is his original work. And you look at the Danshan and Sanchi, which I just mentioned, the two major ingredients in there. And this is ancient use, traditional use, in, improves blood circulation and remove status, remove clots. And the new use is like this. And they are single compound, isolating from Danshan to do all that now. And Sanchi actually is uh, another species of uh, Panax ginseng, not to ginseng. And in, so I brought all this work back from Hong Kong now, went to UK and back to uh, 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 Sydney. And this is the work done by my PhD student. He formed a model, like most uh, uh, if like system biology or omic thing, you just use one cell line first. And then garlic acid is a phenolic acid, we use it. And he formed this model to show that garlic acid, actually if the cell system is uh, disturbed by adenosine, homocysteine, and also uh, TNF alpha, uh, one of the uh, cytokine coming out after, uh, if you like, inflammation. So you challenge the cell, and then you put garlic acid in, you regrow. And we use a similar uh, model to work on Danshan and work on Sanchi. And plus the fact that we screen the mechanism of action using nitric oxide action, uh, this is quite normal now. People are using this, and we find out, uh, see whether this is also working with the two pair of herbs. And this is the uh, result hasn't been published yet, and just quite fresh. And the ratio of Danshan to Sanchi is actually interesting. It correlates quite well in the Chinese literature, in the ancient formula. If you change the ratio of Danshan to Sanchi, can be treated in different type of uh, cardiovascular-related disease. Okay? And that's it. This is the pure extract from that. And then we more curious to find out which molecules of this Danshan which molecule of the Sanchi are actually combining to give the right answer. Okay. And then what we did is, you can see the IC50 in some of the more lipid soluble compound is more active than the other, but some of the active compound in the Danson are toxic as well, uh, such of a neurotoxic. So it depends, the ratio depends on whether you can uh, do the such a dose response curve, okay. And this is a standard such of a software we can use it. If it is uh, equals to one, is additive. Is less than one, is synergistic, antagonistic. This is actually everybody using it. Okay, so that is the basis, right? And now I'm going to introduce you quality of life. How do you measure quality of life? And every one of us. If you are offering after 24 hours on the plane, you're already sub-health. And then, and then if you measure your blood pressure, it's already going up or whatever, not enough sleep. Right? So, and then your quality of life, not so good. But in this case, we have recently, uh, since, well, not 10 years ago now, we, one of the other person uh, who is a PhD student, Zhao Li, actually, she developed this one and then we contribute the work to her, and eventually 
she is a TCM practitioner. She know all about this. You know the Chinese medicine is uh, diagnosis is very rudimentary. You don't need stethoscope. You don't need biomarker, right? And this is how they measure. And this is vividly. So most of the traditional medicine are similar to that. So what we can do is, if you can actually uh, observe, ask questions, and also measure the pulse, and this is the most difficult one to do and there's a lot of science trying to do it now so and that together collectively they can differentiate whether you are sub health or not sub health or a different type of increasing hot you feeling hot or you heat related or cold related you are afraid of cold so that actually is can be related to rheumatoid arthritis okay. so this is a very picture one that we can see as far as if you have a good concept of health, you remain on the left side, then you won't have disease to die. But if you do that, go to TCM practitioner and then reverse it. So, but this is health related. And from that, we form a model. These are questionnaire. We administer this to the patient before and after TCM treatment. And we compare this with uh, WHO 100 and uh, S short form 30. And we, the red figure shows you anything above 7 is better than the other. So, and the model generally developed is actually challenged with WHO 100 and SF 36. And that is the better one. Okay. Now, at the end of the day, to challenge the patient with cardiovascular failure, we've done all this. And when I'm in Australia, we actually mesh trying to persuade people uh, doing it in English, and it's successful now. And that's the, the one that we're trying to do. Uh, for those who are not Chinese speaking, you can, I can give this free to them. Yeah. Summarizing, what I have done is, Zhong Jian mentioned about you grow the herb and then authenticated it, and then you do a cell system to screen it. You can show what sort of gene is expressed or reduced, and also your protein increase or decrease. And that formed the basis of biomarker, okay? And this is a very busy table, but I can talk over an hour on that, but very cut the long story short. Chemistry, all the chemical method, all the biological method can be put in a database, and this is what they call bioinformatics now. And from there, each of the herb or each of the Working extract can figure out whether you can identify it, recognize it, or predict the word from the molecule. And at the end, and that will give you an answer, what product should be used, okay? And the take home message, actually, we need to have an open mind. And I am actually the link person trained in traditional science and now trying to link the two things together. Right? We hope that by linking, other than the person doing it, we need human resources. We need to train a lot of PhD students to do that, and the documentation. And this other thing that is, later on I will find, tell you more about different monograph, have different sorts of uh, country, regional control on it. So how we can harmonize all this. And this is an interesting one to follow in the workshop. I think all this now, I think I better shut up. I think time is there. Okay? Come to <coughs> visit Sydney. It's a lovely place. Great. Since we are doing great on time, I will give the podium to Dr. Shen again to answer a few questions, maybe two questions uh, from the audience. I watch you through, I'm sorry about that. When I look at my watch, it's getting time. So. Yes. Okay. So one of your slides, you have a, there was a tech curve. Yes. With uh, nitric oxide inhibition. Yes. I always thought that nitric oxide was good when you have a cardiovascular problem. Well, I, you, you hit the right question. Because <coughs> pharmacology wise, but the T half of nitric oxide is very, very short. Okay? <coughs> So, and it will not do too much damage if you are inside the body. It 
The, the guy who discovered nitrogen oxide is a Roman, uh, Bowman Run and Reds, right, in Australia. Bowman mentioned that the nitrogen oxide, nitrates, the, the enzyme controlling it, after the nitrogen oxide in the body dilated blood vessel, it helps you to relax the blood vessel. Therefore, you are actually encouraging uh, blood circulation. And this is why you put your nit nitrate, Christian Chai nitrate, under the tongue if you are angina. And then you dilate the blood vessel, right? But the endogenous nitrate oxide very shortly. But if you any inflammation, and it trickle all some of that, nitrate oxide trickle all the other sort of uh, cytokines as well. And that is where the problem comes in. You've got TF, DNF, and then you have uh, adenosine coming up. So you're measuring the INOX and not the INOX. INOX, not the INOX. I, okay, exactly. that is when the... Yes, yes, that's good. Yeah. And then the other thing about the uh, nitric oxide is uh, normally if people screen on anti-inflammatory action now, inflammatory is one of the worst <coughs> evil in human body. And if you have inflammation to start off, and then you trigger off all the other things. So that's why your <coughs> sort of antioxidant and uh, all that is useful. I'll probably not show that in my presentation. <laughs> okay, I will, before I introduce uh, Dr. Stevens, I will let him. It is my him. pleasure to uh, give my Thank you. Thank you so much.